Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I am proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. Look, at so when I when I start making a video like this, like I have so much stuff going on in my head, and I want to explain it all, right? But I, I can't. It's time constraints and shit, right? I, and then I'm just very limited in shit. See, a lot of you people don't know, it's like, I mean, most of the people that know me know that I take care of my father and shit, right? But you don't understand what that fucking entails and shit, right? And so I have a very limited time before I have access to do these videos, like in the morning. Like right now it's morning time and shit, right? But so you don't understand. It's like, okay, I've got my dad up. I got him, uh, got him fed, got him cleaned. You know, he's got his new clothes on. I sit him down and then uh, I have to clean all his bedding and stuff. And then I put that stuff in the washing machine. And after I put it in the washing machine, Usually by that time then, because my dad's been sitting down a few minutes, then usually he's starting to take a little bit of a nap. Usually he'll take a little bit of a nap at that time. And this is like one of the only times I have during the day to make a video is like those couple hours right after his breakfast and everything. And he sits down and usually he'll take a nap, but that doesn't always happen and shit, right? And then if he's awake and stuff, what I have to, so then what I do later in the afternoon and stuff, because he, when he's more awake or, and to keep him asleep and stuff, because it's, it's a different time of day, I play music, and so because that's what makes him come. So all day in my house, I have the radio blaring very loud because he's, he's old. His hearing isn't as good because I have like the TV in his room, but that doesn't do it and shit. It doesn't do it enough, the, and it's not music. The music just works better and shit, right? So the stereo's blaring in my house all fucking day long, right? All day long, right? So. Even if I come in my room and I close the door, it's still loud. <laughs> like I said, I have the stereo blaring all fucking day long and shit, right? And that's what keeps him comfortable and shit. And he's got the music. There's always that music. There's always some noise there for him. It helps. You. That's what you have to learn. Is like when you're taking care of people, you try things and try things and you see what works and shit, right? So like when people like if they talk about like me doing live streams and it's like I'm not going to get a stream yard and start doing live streams. I can't do that because first of all the music's blaring at all times during the day in my house and right and I don't ever know exactly what I don't know what's going to happen. There is no fucking schedule and shit, right? It's it's you just deal with it as it comes and shit, right? So like these are frustrating. So what happened right now I'm I'm extremely frustrated and depressed. And sad. A couple days ago, I'd made this great video because Smokey Robinson was on the Vlad TV thing and he was talking about uh, Michael Jackson's death and talking at the memorial and he was talking about like enablers and yes men. And Smokey was talking about propofol. Like he actually, Smokey said every three years he gets a, colonosc a colonoscopy. And so if you people don't know, it's like that's when they shove a camera up your ass. <laughs> Start looking for cancer polyps and shit, right? But they knock you out where they make you unconscious and shit, right? So Smokey was like, yeah, I did propofol a long time ago. He says, because he was talking about getting colonoscopies and shit, right? And he was like, yeah, I did. A, he said, I did. I got a colonoscopy. They knocked me out. He says, when I woke up from the propofol, he says, I felt great and shit, right? There wasn't like the hangover. Cause, and he's like, he, and, and so Smokey says, what was that? And the guy told him it's propofol. And he says, can I get some of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh shit. And then so Smokey was talking about that and then he was saying how the doctor says, no, you cannot have this stuff. It has to be administered in a in a doctor's office, like a serious setting and shit, right? He said, no, this is like dangerous shit. You can't have this stuff, right? And so then he uh, Smokey was talking about Michael Jackson, how everybody around him is a yes man, yes man. And he said Michael then just uh, avoided anybody that would like contradict or uh, challenge any of his feelings or anything he was wanting to do and he just got yes men around him who were always saying yes yes and so in the video like I was explaining how like that's the moonwalker community they're all just a bunch of yes men all they do is say yes they say yes to everything they don't want to ever deal with any of the hard realities of what life is actually like and shit right like just like a simple thing it's like it's like if you people have never taken um one time I had some teeth pulled and I got a uh, Vicodin, but the Vicodin, um, they weren't actually even strong enough. So I went and got some more on my own because I have access to freaking drugs and shit. If I want drugs and shit, I have friends and shit, right? So I went and got some more drugs. <laughs> and I was taking a lot of pills for like a week's period of time. I was taking quite a bit of pills and shit, right? To, 
And I, I was just stupid. I shouldn't have done it. But actually, I enjoy the high. It, it w and I can tell you, it was not that I was taking the medications purely. It does the pain relief, but I also enjoy the high because a lot of people that just don't know simple stuff, pain medication is opiates, right? So when I'm taking Vicodin, or if I take some Xanax, those are opiates. And a lot of people think, oh, that's pain medication. You get it from a doctor. No, it's opium. Same thing as heroin and morphine, those hard drugs. Those are opiates. Those come from opium. That's what Xanax is and, and Vicodin. Those are opiates. They're hard drugs and shit. And you get a high from it and it feels good. You feel warm inside. The, the fucking opium makes you feel nice and warm and relaxed and kind of feels good. Right? So... That's the thing with drugs and shit, right? It's a tricky freaking, it's a tricky street and shit, right? But so what I was going to mention about that, so I, like, I don't have a lot of experience with pills because I don't use that stuff, but when I was doing them, I was enjoying them and I was like, okay, I have a purpose. In your head, you're thinking, oh, I'm not doing these just to get high. I'm actually doing it to kill the pain. But in reality, you're actually, you start really quickly, you turn into, you're using it for the high. But what happens, you take those pills and you get constipated. And like, I eat oranges every night. Like a lot of people like, see, this is like real life stuff. I don't mind talking about stuff like this, right? It's like, one of you, what they call is to keep your system regular, right? And so you, you poop regular and shit. You have a regular system and shit, right? So like what thing I do is that every night before I go to bed, like so right before I brush my teeth because oranges are very acidic, right? And so it hurts your teeth and shit. It can cause, you know, so they're acidic and shit, right? So every night before I brush my teeth, I eat two oranges, right? And then in the morning, I have just like the greatest freaking poop. <laughs> it's like, it's funny, like talking about shit. I don't mind talking about shit like this. When children, people that would take this video and edit it and be like oh my god he's talking about having a poop you are children right it's hard for me to deal with the world because i haven't been a child a stupid idiot child in a long fucking time i just talk about real world but this is like the real world stuff of what we talk about like michael jackson okay if michael jackson when he's taking medications and stuff like that okay well one of the things is is it makes you constipated and the next thing you know, you got a big fucking turd that doesn't want to come out, but it's in there and you can feel it. And you're like, damn, I got to take a shit, but the fucking shit won't come out because you're all constipated. And that was one of the things what happened, a side effect of what happened of me taking those pain medications is I got constipated, which I had never been constipated like that, you know, where you're really like constipated. So I had never had to deal with that shit, right? Then I had to deal with it and shit, right? So Michael Jackson, through being all the narcotics and stuff like that, people, that's what I'm saying. You people want to talk about all the good stuff. You don't ever want to talk about the realities. It's like, well, shit, how much time, how many times did Michael Jackson had to suffer constipation from the fucking heavy medications of what he was uh, subjecting himself to, right? That's just reality, like hard realities of what's going on in the world, right? So what happened the other day when I made that video, I was making that hard, great video. I made this great video about the, uh, uh, Smokey Robinson on the DJ Vlad. And then it, it got blocked worldwide, right? And then so I, I trimmed it down and edited it to where it's like, there's no, because I was going to do it in pieces then. It's like, okay, well, I'll just do the first section that was like seven minutes. And so I was only using a piece of their copyrighted material. I was using it from like one minute and three seconds to one, one minute, 55 seconds. That's what got copyrighted on me, right? And it's like, dude, that's totally fair use. I only used one little piece of your video from less than a minute and then they still copyrighted and black and uh, blocked it worldwide and shit, right? So I was like, damn. And I was just super frustrated that that video got blocked. I had, like I said, I don't have the time and effort to do the. I, it's hard for me to make these videos. I make this great one, and then bam, it gets blocked worldwide. There goes my all my effort, all the energy I put into that time that I don't have the time for. It's just incredibly frustrating. So I'm leading up to that is like this video that I'm making right now. I'm afraid to make a video. There's copy, a lot of copyrighted material in here now, I think. I know what I'm doing is fair use technically, and I should be able to use it, but it's in here, and any one of these fuckers could block it, and then I, it fucks it all up because I can't. I'm not good at editing, and it's just tricky shit. It's really frustrating and shit for me to do this stuff, and but I try my best. I keep fucking fighting because there's nobody out there in the world fighting for Michael Jackson trying to tell his true story. Do you think that fucking Mike, you can see like this video I'm gonna do right here. It's gonna be incredibly difficult for me to make this video like under 40 minutes is almost impossible and shit, right? And this is one specific little thing. How the fuck are you gonna talk about Michael Jackson's entire life and explain anything that actually matters in a movie that's like less than two hours? You can't do it. 
And so it's totally what it is. It's one-sided point of view. They don't fucking do any counterpoints. They put up no uh, arguments and shit. Only when they want it, one little thing. It's just ridiculous. They don't ever do stuff. So anytime you were ever doing a movie on Michael Jackson, it would have to be focused on some very small fucking point and some issue that would, and you could talk about that and shit, right? Because you can't talk about Michael Jackson's life in a movie. You, you can't deal with everything. It's just not fucking possible and shit. Because you'll see like in this video, this is what investigation looks like. And this is what it, how long it takes to do this stuff, right? So as I was going to, I have all these ideas, I have things and stuff, right? But one day I'll come across something and it's like, that's the, that's the piece right there. I need that little piece and off of this little clip here, I can build an entire video off of this. And it's actually, I built too much. I have way too much and stuff and I'm talking too long here. I'm already ruining this, but I'm gonna try and get through as fast as I can. I might not even be able to get through this fucking video because it's uh, gonna be tough. But I needed, I found one little piece and it's like, this is the one I, that I can build a video off this. This is kind of how I do stuff. So listen to this. It's a tragedy, it's a tremendous shock that this kind of thing would happen to a young guy with such talent. Uh, personally, all I will remember is his incredible talent. The rest of it, I don't want to know about, really. The rest of it, you know, Liza said it best. She said, I'm so glad we're celebrating him now because tomorrow all hell would break loose. She was right. But as far as I'm concerned, I listen to the records, I watch the videos, and I turn off the TV. I don't want to know about the rest of it. All I'll remember of Michael is this incredible talent. Okay, so um, that's what I want. Okay, so that's what we did. As, as Michael Jackson fans, it's like all we did is enjoy the music and watch the videos, and then we turned off the TV and didn't want to hear the negative stuff, right? That's what we did. That is what we did. And what happened? Because we did that, what this is what happened to Michael Jackson. On HLN. Now, I want to get into here right now with, with my physician colleagues how not healthy Michael Jackson was. When you hear that he was so healthy and he was in great shape and stuff, and he looked great when he was performing uh, uh, in that uh, rehearsal, not in great shape. And we're going to go over the autopsy and show you that. First, for, first thing I want you to see is what he had to wear at night in order to get through the night because he was so incapacitated, so anesthetically, so he was under general anesthesia, let's face it, he would wear this. Remember there was talk in court the other day about a condom catheter? Okay, so the condom catheter, you people, it's like, that's what I'm talking about, the hard realities of like being constipated. It's like you people, you people want to just turn off the TV and don't want to deal with any of the realities and you just want to look at the good stuff. And I'm saying that's what the, these, it's like, okay, I understand that while Michael Jackson was alive and we were wanting him to live his life and we were not worrying about it, as long as he was producing the quality fucking art of what he was producing, then it wasn't our job to worry about what he was dealing with in his real life. Not really and shit, right? But now he's dead. You know, and now it's time to go back and look and see, well, what was he actually dealing with? Why did he die? What actually happened to this man, right? Now it's time to ask all the questions and deal with all the hard realities. And this is one of the things when I'm talking about Michael Jackson is like, you have to deal with realities. Look at Michael Jackson had children. The children were in the house. That day that Michael Jackson died, the children are in the house. Michael Jackson is being drugged up in the room with the doctor. Michael Jackson is not having any kind of relationship or inter any interactions with his children. He is definitely not raising his children and he's definitely, as an actual father, not protecting them. He is paying other people and trusting in them to do all of the jobs of where he should be actually doing that stuff, right? So Michael Jackson, you cannot claim that he's like a caring something. This is, and this is the kind of stuff it's like you have to ask this stuff because, because I thoroughly believe that Michael Jackson cared about people. I totally believe that and support that. I totally think that Michael Jackson does not want to hurt children in any way, but you have to look at this and say, oh, but he was, he, and, and he was hurting his own children. He was not protecting his own children, and he was doing this for his own personal pleasure. He was up in his room being drugged out in isolation. Like, what if the children would have walked in and seen Dr. Murray slipping the con? Like, see, it's a condom. 
if you this is a condom catheter so he slips the condom over Michael Jackson's penis and Michael Jackson then when he's passed out on the drugs because he's not able to get up and go take a piss because he's so drugged out so he pisses in this thing and it fills up in the bag so at night he's not pissing on himself he's pissing in this condom catheter this is hard reality of real life now if any of you people would have seen Michael Jackson in that state at that time would you have just turned your back and walked away and said oh well we don't want to talk about this that's you know it's like come on or would you fucking start screaming from your lungs somebody's got to help Michael Jackson he's got a fucking problem something is wrong here he's being drugged out there's a doctor with him he's he's pissing in a fucking condom catheter it's so like what would have happened if you would have walked in and seen Dr. Murray with Michael Jackson's penis in his hand and then seen Dr. Murray putting that condom, sliding that condom over Michael Jackson's penis. Like it, it might, and he's totally, Michael's passed out asleep and Dr. Murray has got Do Michael Jackson's penis in his hand and he's putting a fucking condom catheter. Like, or what would even happen if you would have walked in and seen Dr. Murray removing that catheter and right before he, Michael wakes up, cause he's gotta wake up and give him probably, he probably wakes him up with drugs and shit, right? It's like in the movie Scarface and he's telling his wife, he says, you, you wake up with the fricking, uh, with the pill, you go to bed with the quaalude and shit, right? He's like, your belly is so fucking polluted, I can't have no babies and shit, right? It's like, that's the real fucking world and shit, right? And you people are like, you people just want to turn off the TV and act like it didn't exist. No, Michael's the king of pop. Oh, the king of pop who's doing this kind of shit? How can you dare to claim ever that he was a good father? And how does that guy who cares about children so much allow his children to be put in this kind of fucking vulnerable situation exposing them to this kind of fucking neglect it is it's crazy it's crazy crazy and shit this goes where you think it goes and this drains the urine all night long that's how he would go to bed at night wearing a condom catheter this is what he had on all right now this is not a healthy person wears something like this nor does somebody who's sleeping normally with the help of medication even. It's somebody who's under general anesthetic. Do you agree with me, Dr. John Gombrowski? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is extremely unusual to be that sedated that you can't get up and say, oh, geez, my bladder's a little f full. I mean, he's a 50-year-old man. He's got a little uh, BPH or hypertrophy of the prostate. You've seen commercials for that. I gotta get up and urinate. And now we've just got him so sedated, he needs a catheter, you know, to relieve himself. A, a little and unusual. A v ridiculous. And the, Dr. Murray apparently in his tapes talked about how he demanded to sleep 14 to 16 hours a night. Also, not healthy, not normal, and leads to something that I... 14 to 16 hours a night, you know? Okay, so all of that time when Michael Jackson is, is being drugged up, he's doped out of his fucking mind. Who is taking care of his kids? This is the kind of thing about what I, I, I try to stress to the people, is that... Michael Jackson being of the Jackson family and being the person and the entertainer of what he was and having the children, all of those things. When you're a drug addict, there's a point where you understand that you're a drug addict and you say, okay, it's time to clean up because you care about all these other people. But Michael Jackson absolutely did not care about anybody. And he could not possibly have ever cared about anybody at this point of his life because he's placing himself in this situation. Dr. Murray is not some uh, drug peddler on the street that like they show in the movies, hey kids, you want to taste, you know? You want to taste of this? You want some drugs? And they try and get you hooked on drugs? That's not what's happening. Michael Jackson found Dr. Murray, he called him like the original story, he called him over for like his kid out of cold or whatever how it was, they had that original meeting. But then what it is, is Michael talks to him and see what it is, is Michael's smart and he sees the way in which Dr. Murray was enamored with Michael Jackson's fame and that Michael, and he would have been like a, like a moonwalker, like a moonwalker type of person, right? And so Michael sees that and Michael understands I can use this guy. So Michael's like, wait, what are you? Oh, you're a brain surgeon? Oh, that means you have access to propofol if you need it and shit, right? So Michael is the one who tell, he sees that Dr. Murray is the fan, which means he's vulnerable and to being subjected to Michael Jackson's fame, Michael can use him. Cause this is how it goes with drug dealers. Like 
You turn people into drug dealers. As a drug user, if my friend has access to drugs, I'll turn him into a drug dealer because he's got the access. And I'll be like, hey, you want to make a little quick money and shit? Get some drugs for me and shit, right? I mean, and so I turn him into a drug dealer. He wasn't wanting to be a drug. This is like the real world, how it happens. Dr. Murray was not a propofol dealer. Michael turned him into a fucking drug dealer like that. Michael did that to him because he saw that he was vulnerable. Michael uses people for his own benefit. That's what he did to Dr. Murray. Now, legally, Dr. Murray couldn't do all that stuff. So he's responsible for his own actions and he should have went to jail. Just one thing real too, quick too is about that. Like saying how people react and how dumb they are and shit, right? This is like what I have to do it. I, had, I was making a video, and in the video I, I had said, and then uh, Matt's FTR was playing it on his live stream, right? He was replaying parts of the video. And in the thing, I was talking about Michael Jackson, and I, and I said, he should have been investigated. Okay, we were talking about the pedophile allegations. And I was saying, and I said, he should have been investigated. And then Matt's FTR and Natanya Moonwalker both instantly come out and say, he was investigated. And it's like, whoa, my God, you people are so stupid. You don't understand how conversation works. Do you think, how is it possible that I could not, me being the person I am, you don't think I know Michael Jackson was investigated, he was investigated one time, then they had the court trial. You don't think that I know that that happened? So I don't need to state that because it, it, you have to be so stupid for you to not know. For that to be a talking point that you don't know that I know that Michael was investigated, it is stupid as fuck. So when I'm when I said Michael should have been investigated, that was me endorsing the investigation that it should have occurred. It's not me saying I don't know that I didn't know that Michael had been investigated. And I'm saying he should have been investigated because you're you're assuming that I think that he was never investigated, like. And so Matt and, and Natanya instantly, oh, he was investigated. See, that's what I'm saying. They're not dealing with any reality of the evidence of what I'm doing. They're looking for some little, this is how dumb people are. People think that if you can make somebody else look dumb, that that makes you smart. And it absolutely does not. It does not. You have to be stupid as fuck to even think that way, right? So that's how these people are. They're dumbest on the fucking highest level of dumb. That's what these people are. They are fake as hell and shit, right? And so... I wanted, I didn't get the actual time here on this other thing. And I'll just tell you really quick what they talk about. What they, instead of me trying to find it because it'll take more time. Um, he talked about Michael Jackson's lungs, that Michael had serious damage to his lungs from being unconscious like that. And he was not being with a, 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 a oxygen thing that you get, uh, it's like what they give like people that are on the COVID. They put them put them on that breathing apparatus thing. I can't think of the right word for it to show whatever it is. But he was saying that Michael had a lot of damage to his lungs. And so when they were talking about this and, and the and the and you know Michael's under heavy drug use and stuff, and he's got damage to his body like uh, like uh, Dr. Drew is saying here, he's not healthy. What you can understand from this is that there's no way possible that Michael Jackson could have performed like the 50 shows or whatever it was that he was supposed to do at the O2 Arena for the This Is It concert and shit. That was not possible. And so it was not possible. So what Michael Jackson in this This Is It, he's never here he's not doing this uh, rehearsal. He's not doing this preparing to go over and, and do his performance. This is like Michael Jackson's swan song. This is his farewell to the world. He's, he's allowing the production to go on because he knows it's going to be a movie. They're going to turn it into a movie. Michael knows that. Michael Jackson committed suicide. And all of the evidence shows that this guy knew that he could not go do the this is it, that this was his farewell son, son, swan song to the world. This is a guy, and you can see the mental state of what he's in and stuff, is that he's getting ready to commit suicide, and he knows it. And uh, it's, it's one of the things about with him is like he feels like he's accomplished everything he's done everything is what it is and, and for him to feel that way what it is of what he's done is he left behind his true story he left it behind in his work and stuff and he's like when I die people are finally gonna start going back and analyzing all of my work and he's praying that somebody makes the discovery of what his work actually is and who he what he really really was and how all of his pain was generated from him being abandoned as a child and then Diana Ross telling him the truth when they get to Motown so then as Michael Jackson's thinking that he made this great achievement with his family that was taken away from him because now he realizes that 
that's not his family. And Joe was using him. It alters everything. And then he thinks, okay, well, now I'm going to be back with Diana Ross. But then Diana Ross lived her own life. And she was married. And she's having kids and stuff. And Michael's feeling like he's being pushed further and further out of her life. And then Smokey's living his own life. As Smokey talks, he's like, Smokey's like, I'm living my dream. This is my dream. I'm living my dream. That's how Smokey sees. So Michael never got to be part of really Smokey's life. Smokey never actually treated him like his son and stuff. And so then Michael's feeling in total abandonment. <clears throat> He's abandoned by uh, the Jacksons are not there. He's abandoned by his mom, by his real dad. Michael's abandoned by his fans because they don't understand his art. Michael's abandoned by all the artists in the world who don't understand his art and shit. They don't really understand it. Just like I showed you with the Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow didn't want to hear any of the bad stuff. And it's like, well, if you don't want to hear any of the bad stuff, you don't want to know the reality, then you can't understand the art. So how then you can, can you ever claim to have appreciation for what this guy does if you have no understanding? understanding of what it is right but now it's uh, now it's like okay come on the only thing that we can ever do for michael jackson now is to tell his true life story the thing that he died for he gave us this is what he gave his whole life for is is to convey the true message of who he actually was the actual person of what he was this is and then at the end he kills himself because he says it's mission accomplished i've done everything i can do I'm going to kill myself because the only way now for me to get my story told is for me to die. And that is what happened because this, the, the, the way I made the, the connection was through him dying and Diana Ross being placed in his will and then Diana Ross not going to the memorial. That is what sparked in my head to allow me to have the thought when I watched the lady sing, sings the blues and I saw Michael morphing into Diana. Those, but because I had that information about the will and the memorial, that's what got me to say, could Diana Ross be Michael Jackson's mother? That's how it happened. If Michael doesn't die, I, that never happens. I don't ever have that moment and shit, right? And still, nobody would know the truth about who he is and shit, right? So, I wanted to show you, this is a... Uh, this is called Michael's last phone call and shit. This is a this is like a suicide note. This is a guy wanting to create a con a conspiracy and he wants people to look into his life. That's what it's doing. And because he wants pe and he also he wants to be he wants to go out like as the king of pop. He doesn't want the negative like being like Michael Jackson's a junkie. He died as a loser, as a guy who was being accused of a pedophile. He needs some kind of overriding factor that can change up the game and like create a conspiracy and get people to look into his stuff. This, and now there's a big difference between this is Michael Jackson conscious and aware of what he's saying, and Michael Jackson damn sure knows that this is being recorded when he's like saying, I don't know who's listening. Michael did this. Michael set this up. This is fake as hell and shit, right? So let's listen to it, how Michael's talking in this phone call. Like, just right there when, you, when he says there might be a group of people they want to get rid of me, that is junky fucking nonsense and shit right it doesn't happen like that the way he's doing it he's setting it up to for the idiots that don't know any better and shit right it's it's so it's so dumb it's dumb 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 it's redundant <laughs> Okay, and so just so you people know, I haven't like what they call is vetting. I haven't 
I haven't investigated thoroughly into this phone call and shit, right? So just like right there too, it's like, cause like I said, I can make mistakes. And so that's another thing about when people talk about making mistakes and I make mistakes. Cause you people don't know, it's like, like in the movie, The National Treasure. And he says, Thomas Edison, failed at making the light bulb a thousand times, but he didn't fail. He learned a thousand ways how to not make a light bulb and shit. And that's the process of how you have to get to get it refined and get it to where it's perfect so that people think, oh, this is so simple. Look how easy it is. You just screw this into here. You flip the switch. Bam, look at we got light. Oh, it's so easy. And so you have no idea of the process of development, how they had to get it so you people could see it in its simple state and shit, right? So like I said, I haven't vetted this phone call i've heard i know that it's out there i never really cared about it because i knew it's just junky fucking nonsense but i have heard people speaking about it so i'm assume I'm, I'm taking it at face value that this is real just so you know though i haven't vetted it i don't know like if that's some michael jackson impersonator but like i haven't done that investigation into this phone call but i knew it existed so i went ahead and put it in the video because of that okay that's that's my feeling is i do believe it's real i know i've heard speak people speaking about it but I personally have not thoroughly investigated to find out if it's real, but I do think it's real and shit, right? But the one part at the end there where he says, he says, he says, they could shoot me, they could stab me, they could frame me and say I overdosed on drugs. When people are doing stuff, when, when they're confessing and they're saying stuff, see how he sets it up with two things that he knows is not going to happen. It's for the drama effect. And then he tells you the thing that is going to happen. They're, um, they could frame me and say I overdosed on drugs, right? They can do a lot of things. No, Michael did that. Michael Jackson, it, when he's making this, when he's making this, he knows every night he's being drugged up by Dr. Murray that Michael's the one who ordered Dr. Murray to get the drugs. Dr. Murray did not offer it to him. Michael was the one who did that, right? And then you have, this is what is known as, and like, thank God, to Dr. Murray for being the piece of shit of what he was. Thank God he did that so we have this recording because this is the recording that matters. The recording that Michael Jackson just hit on the phone, he's present, he's aware. He knows exactly what he's doing there, right? They're, he knows what he's doing. So he can manipulate and do can be in control. But this one, this slurred speech recording that Dr. Murray made of him, Michael doesn't know that he's being recorded. So this is where you get Michael Jackson in his pure state and you get the reality of the person he actually was because he doesn't know that he's being recorded. He's just 100% being himself. And in this situation, Mike, look at how he just said they could say I overdosed on drugs, right? And they could frame me, say I overdosed on drugs. Okay, but when Michael Jackson is heavily sedated under drugs, he's not saying... Why am I drugged so heavily? He's not saying, what you people need to say is he's not paranoid. Did you hear the paranoia in the phone call? Okay, but when he's actually under drugs and, and sedated, he's not paranoid. There is zero paranoia here. And he has zero concern for his children. He's not, that I'm saying, there's no paranoia here. There's nothing in this conversation where he's like, uh, I think I'm drugged too heavily, doctor. I think you're drugging me. Are you, are you doing this for my benefit? Why am I drugged so heavily? Because that's instantly what you would do. As soon as you start taking, like there's the movie called Conspiracy Theory with uh, Mel Gibson, and they, they, they handcuff him, they've got him, and they're going to, they're going to drug him, give him a truth serum. And so instantly when they fucking, because uh, the guy, and he's like, what's that? And then the doctor says, it's gravy for the brain, right? And then they give him the drug. Instantly it starts hitting him and he starts flipping out. He's paranoid. He's like, oh no, I've had gravy. I've had gravy and shit, right? He starts being like, I don't know. What are you doing to me? That's not what Michael's doing here. He has none of that paranoia. He has no fear of being, uh, drugged in this kind of state and shit michael has no fear of that he has no fear of the concern for his children his well-being of his children while he's being incapacitated and under the influence of drugs none of that exists here that's why i'm, I'm pointing out so much is that that phone call shows you the bullshit fake side of Michael Jackson. This is the real side of Michael Jackson when he's actually under drugs and there is no paranoia and there is no concern that he's being over drugged and, and, and that somebody's gonna take advantage of his children because he can't care for him and he can't watch for him. None of that shit exists here. This is the this is the important one and shit. This is the real one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so he's not like, he's like talking to Dr. Murray. Like, he totally feels safe around this Dr. Murray. And he's saying that he's worried that he's going to be, they're going to make it look like he overdosed on drugs. But this is Michael Jackson on drugs. He's not paranoid of being on the drugs. He has no fear of, of Dr. Conrad Murray. He has no fear that Conrad Murray's taking advantage of him. He is fully open and spilling the bees, telling the truth of his real feelings and stuff. This is not a guy who's dealing with any fear of being murdered and assassinated. This is a guy who, by his own choice, has placed himself into this position where he's under this kind of sedation. But the pain the pain of what he's talking about. He says, the children are depressed because their mind is depressing them. Their mind is depressing them. This is Michael telling you what his real pains are. And he says, they walk around with no mother. They drop them off. They leave a psychological degradation of that. Okay, that's the pain. It's like physical pain can be dealt with. You can numb it out with drugs and then usually it goes away and then it's just a physical pain. You moved past physical pain, but mental pain you can't ever get rid of. It's constantly in your head driving you crazy, driving you mad, right? It creates all kinds of depression. It causes all kinds of shit. You cannot get rid of that mental pain. It's so far worse than the physical pain and shit. The mental pain is much more of the damaging thing. And you could tell here that Michael Jackson has a severe mental pain and some kind of traumatic issue of what he's dealing with. And he's relating it to these abandoned children because that's what Michael is, which nobody could understand what this actually was because we all just assumed that Michael was a Jackson. But when you see him in this voice, state and you see exactly what he's talking about you can see the truth it's like no Michael's got a problem and when you understand the truth is that he was abandoned as a child and you can see that that's what's causing all this problem and stuff and he, they walk around with no mothers like I said when when uh, Diana tells Michael the truth now Catherine is like she raised him but she's not like his mother he lost that he she's not his mother she raised him and he can love her and he, care, he cares about her and stuff, but she's not his actual mother, right? And then Diana, she comes back and she's acting like, I'm going to be your mother. We're back together. Oh, God has brought us back together. But then what does Diana do? She gets married, starts having children. She gets divorced, starts having other relationships. And then that's why when she marries the Arnie Ness and people are always saying that Michael was so mad that Diana married Arnie Ness and shit, right? And it's like, that's because Michael's feeling like you're just, here I am again. You're pushing me out. Now here you are. You're loving this guy. And here you are now having more kids with him, which would have brought Michael so much joy because that's like how Evan Ross is one of the children, right? Then Michael should have had all the joy of like being like, oh, Diana's got kids. That's so great. Is she getting married? She's going to have more kids. Michael should have been so much enjoying of that, but he wasn't. There was some issue that was caused with him that it caused a separation of the relationship between him and Diana. But that's because 
that's his mother and she's having all this life on her own and building uh, relationships and building a family and Michael's not 100% accepted. He's not really part of it. Even though she's trying and there is some things, Michael doesn't, can't accept that because he's feeling, he understands that she was abandoned, that he was dropped off. You know, and then he had to go through it again. Now he lost, and he had to go through, he lost Catherine. He lost the whole Jackson family. That damaged him. Then Diana's relationships, all that stuff again. He's getting pushed away. The fans don't understand his music. All of that stuff of what's actually going on and shit, right? And then so, this is a... Uh, so, Michael, when he's making the this is this, you got to understand that he's, at the time where he's being drugged up, like what you just heard, he's in the process of this uh, rehearsal stuff for the this is it right and so this is going to be like this is one of those things this is a, a, a trailer for the movie this is it which i've used trailers in my videos before and i think i can use this and shit but it's one of those things if this if you see it, there's an instant cut it's because they blocked it and i didn't be able to use it but i, I should be able i usually i can use trailers and shit right so this is what i want to see is michael was capable of doing this performance because he, and there's also like all the people that are building all the sets and all the money involved in that. Michael is like inside, he doesn't want to just destroy everybody. So he understands it's like, he has to leave behind. That's why it's like Michael finished the, this is it. It got finished. It's not like he died halfway through it, right? If he died halfway through it, now we're talking about a different situation, but he makes it through it. And that's why you have to assume that he committed suicide because the timing of it, and you can see the, uh, situations what are coming up is that this is um <clears throat> michael did this made sure that everybody around was taken care of he he he, perf he knew that this would turn into a movie he knew that the film was there and the performances were there that they could turn this into a movie they could do other things so he didn't feel bad about screwing everybody at, on the other parts of it you know by not performing in the concerts and the people not be able to perform he, he he did what he needed to do and he left this behind and this is all the part about keeping his legacy alive so that people will look into a story he's hoping that this leads to the true um, exposing of who he actually was and shit right but this is Michael this is what's so sad about this dude. it's like this is a guy who knows his plan here is to kill himself his plan here is to kill himself he's never going over to London to the O2 arena to do the this is it tour never that's not his plan his plan is to do this and then say goodbye you know that's what he actually did and shit right but so what you can see too is like you can see that Michael still had the talent. That's part of what I want to show you. You can see Michael had the talent. He's definitely still had the talent. So all he had to do was quit using the drugs, right? All he had to do is quit using the drugs and boy, he would have been healthy and ready to go and take on the world. He could have lived another freaking 30, 40 years easily and performed for a lot more. He could have done so much more. But no, this is it. He he was done. He did enough. And and he's like, I'm not, he doesn't care about the fans. He doesn't care about anybody like that because they don't understand him. They, nobody cares about him. So he's like, why should I care about you? You people don't care about me and shit, right? So Michael wrote the fucking final chapter to his own fucking story and shit, right? This is what he did. It's Michael. Oh, man is here. We're all here because of him. May that continue with him leading the way. This is the moment. This is it. It's an adventure. It's a great adventure. You want to take them places that you've never been before. You want to show them town like you've never seen before. I One more time. Yeah. I love you. I really do. I'm a family, just know that. Home for applause, fade out. 
Michael has a depth to him that people don't really know. This is a dream come true. When MJ comes in the room, his presence is just amazing. That's why I write these kind of songs. It gives some sense of awareness and awakening and hope to people. The why at the center of everything that we're doing is so much about this. I feel so blessed that I can give the world back. Okay, all that stuff, you know, so I could always show you so much more and stuff, but and I just hope that I don't get copyrighted on that. Like I said, if that if there's a weird edit there, it's because I had to cut it out and shit, right? But it's like, look at, this is Michael Jackson doing his fucking song swung, saying farewell to everybody, and he did it in a movie. He put this movie out. Michael did this and shit. He killed himself and shit, right? There's, it's pretty obvious and shit. That's what actually happened. And then he used Conrad Murray... Conrad Murray's the sucker. He's the fall guy and shit, right? And, like, so this is, like, when I think about Conrad Murray, it's, like, this is, like, what makes me think about Conrad Murray, how he'd be saying, like, when he's getting arrested, this is kind of the sentiments of what uh, represents Conrad Murray. Come on, man, President. No, they're taking me in because of the fact that I live in the Soviet Union. I'm just a taxi. President. I'm just a patsy. I'm just a patsy and shit, right? That was Conrad Murray. He's just a patsy and shit, right? He's, it's like you people are, you want to make all these grand conspiracies and it's like, dude, Michael, every reason of what Conrad Murray, the reason why Conrad Murray was there and the reason what Conrad Murray was doing to Michael was orchestrated by Michael himself. Conrad's just a patsy. Michael set him up to be the fucking fall guy. Right. Well, the real people in charge are doing the things that they want to do and orchestrating the things about how they want to do it. Conrad Murray is insignificant. He's nothing and shit. Right. He didn't do anything. Sony didn't do anything. It's ridiculous and stuff for people to act like, uh, oh, Sony did it. It's like Sony had Michael Jackson's music. I mean, they, they had they already had access to every bit. They already had access to it. There is no reason for them to need to kill Michael Jackson because because they don't got access to Michael Jackson's the MJJ productions now because like right now they're talking about Michael Jackson's catalog and it's like so I'd have to hear what the people said but like me personally I don't know Michael Jackson's the MJJ productions that's the catalog that would possess because the Sony ATV Michael Jackson's music his personal songs none of that were in the Sony ATV catalog right so who cares if they sell all of that shit. That has nothing to do. The only thing of what's important for the family to maintain the control of is Michael Jackson's actual songs, right? Because right now they have this issue. They're talking about that they're going to sell some more of Michael Jackson's catalog. And it's like, okay, but what are they actually selling and shit, right? What, 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 what's actually being sold? Is it songs that maybe it's songs that haven't been released and maybe they're going to release those, give those ownerships to Sony and let Sony release them? Maybe that's what they're going to do, and they're going to maintain, they're going to keep the control of all of Michael Jackson's actual albums that have been released. Like I said, I don't actually understand what's going to take place in there, but the people are all crying. They're selling, we don't know what they're doing. You don't know what other stuff is in the MJJ Productions, where the Michael's catalog of music, we don't know what other music is involved in that stuff. We don't understand what's actually going on. Until I hear that the uh, Jackson estate... Until I hear that they actually sold control of like Thriller and stuff like that. If they did shit like that, I would be absolutely disgusted that they would do that and shit. But I can understand why they would do it because Michael's not their child. He's not the father of those children. And he definitely didn't care about those children because look at the uh, incapacitated state. He was all drugged up. All the children are having to be taken care of by who knows who and shit, right? Not having a relationship with their father. They had to see their father die. They had to be put in front of the fucking world media up there on the stage in Paris is saying, my daddy was a good daddy. I love my daddy. <laughs> he made me pancakes and shit or whatever. However, it went down and shit. It's like they had to suffer all that shit, right? So yeah, for that they should be compensated with the finances and shit. And they should they Michael did that. Michael brought him into the world. Michael paid him off and shit, right? He wasn't a good father to him, but he paid him off 
And so they got their money and shit. So now he's like, okay, now you can go live whatever life you want and shit, right? So you can see how Michael thinks that he did okay there and shit. But he was not a good father to him. People, you think that you can just throw money at people and that makes you a good father? It does not and shit, right? So, okay, I got most of this video. I got what I was wanting to say enough for there and there. Let's go ahead and turn this off and shit. And we'll see you guys on the next show. <laughs>